It's literally designed to run and dive into your face. Yeah, but it will actually slow BJ down a little bit because now you wait to level six instead of the level three that would probably usually come through. <laughs> but actually, he'll probably still find a way to make I, something I happen at level just about three. To say, just to keep devastating it going. charge will just amplify him in. We'll see whether or not there's any additional sort of uh, enabling or supportive champions. Sejuani and Silas locked in here for the one. Yeah, and I think this is just great. You know, Hecarim's already the champ. You don't have to worry about a trundle. S Silas is one of the champions that's really difficult to actually punish, and already having the onslaught of shadows to steal away is a great one. So you're finding good team fight tools on the side of Wildcats, which is usually what they like. And whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa. Okay, okay, super quick, super quick. Zach is now locked in with Hecarim and misfortune. The question I want to throw out to you, is this a Tucky Zack? And why am I saying that, Trevor? Well, Tucky's champion pool this summer has included Ash, Karma, uh, Rumble, uh, he played Camille at MSI, he's played Silas, um, Gragas, Seraphine. Well, this is a guy that plays anything and everything. I wonder if it could happen. Yeah, I mean, this is the power of the flexes that you get through because we've even seen you. We've seen the sack in the top lane. Um, we've heard about yep. sack support as yep. well. Um, so it's not unheard of that it can go a lot of different places. I mean, Hecker in top lane even used to be a thing of the past, although majority of the games we've seen from him have been and will also be played in that jungle. On the side of Holy Phoenix, they pick up that Kaiser has been utilized great in team fights once again. So this is the team's or rather the stylistic we're looking at for Wildcats. When I take a look at Zach, not a single game here, Saigon Buffalo all year long, obviously, uh, or maybe a little bit surprisingly. I want to find out where the draft takes us. Kaiser was the last lock in here for the Wildcats. Look for that blue and purple theme. Talia's banned away, Lee Sin followed up as well. And just to go into what these kind of champions were having banned away from Rocky, he's also one of the mid laners that like to be a facilitator. And it makes a lot of sense because the stylistic of being so aggressive around the jungler like you have with BJ, you need a guy that's reliable in terms of setting that jungler up in the mid lane. And that's why Froggy quite often finds the facilitation. So even then, Seraphine will be banned away from Froggy in that mid lane. Galli was one of his champions he's played in the past. And I'm pretty sure he's done it into the Silas too if they want to look for that matchup. I mean, Froggy Silas at MSI is definitely one of the champions that I remember him playing um, fairly significantly. Reminder that, of course, they did represent VCS at that event as Gamma and I'm able to attend. This is Saigon Buffalo's first game back on the international stage on the world stage, correction, since 2018. Now I want to see where this draft goes with Jarvan as the final ban from the Buffaloes. Wildcats will have some chances there. Do they lock in the support and give counter pick for top lane? Do they lock in top lane? Because they make, can they make an educated guess? I feel like, I mean, Poppy is just a champion you can look for here as well, just to shut down the sack immediately. And the Hecarim. He, I mean, Hecarim is uh, unstoppable, at least in the ultimate, at least. Devastating e, of course, yeah. yeah. So, with Trundle, you serve the same purpose. The pillar into Hecarim, Hecarim find that's really annoying because of the slow. And the fact that you can actually cancel sack mid-air with the pillar is also something to go for. This does, however, give the flex over to the side of Saigon Buffaloes. They know what they're going to be playing up against. And Wildcats have decided that they want to leave that counter pick for Farfetch down in the bot side. Now, Leona and Miss Fortune is already a composition we've seen one time today. Yeah. And it looked super good from Rocks and Upset bringing it out, of course. So, team fighting also seems to be the name of the game from Saigon Buffaloes with the kind of CC and the potential, um, what do you call, potency by the ultimates that they're able to get out together. Now, the question I'm going to ask you is, where is this Hecarim and Zach and Gwen oh, going to finish? Well, now it's easy. You throw that jet, Gwen up towards the top side, Hecarim going over to Bean J and Froggy. Wait, actually, see? No. All right, you're right, you're right, you're right. You got me. You got me there. I don't know how this is going to play out. So Kaisa is now looking to be supported here for far fetch. Oh, this could go support. Poppy? And this would be great because it actually far, far, far. Oh, uh, what is going on? The last few seconds, the last I actually liked it, and that's away. my bad for talking about a hover, but I actually did like the Poppy flex into the support role instead. But having the Alistar into the Leona is by no means bad either. Okay, so let's take a few seconds here and zoom out. Let's start by looking at the Wildcats composition because we're not expecting exactly. shenanigans before we see what happens in Saga. How do Wildcats want to win the game? They've already lost one today. Uh, I mean, once again, I think when you have a trundle, you have to try and take charge of the early game instead. While I'm not sure how the mid lane is going to go in terms of who gets that push. So I'm having a hard time saying like how they'll actually get the early game going. It's more something where I'm going to sit back and I'll tell you why it's happening. <laughs>
Uh, but outside of that, you should win the trundle. You want to be able to be one of the skirmishes level three that just basically never lose anything. So if you have anyone to actually come up and facilitate you and get the early game going where you can just go even into the mid to the late game, that at least sets up Wildcats for what, stylistically speaking, from what we've seen in regular games, might not be the strongest without those ultimate and look for it anyway. You know what this reminds me of? This is like an old montage video. This is an old Peace Pigeon montage video where they're just looking <laughs> to make whatever Wombo combo that's going to make sense. Throw in some Monster Cat music and you got yourself a video. Oh man, Peace Pigeon, one of the classic montage makers. I always said, you only know you made it in esports and if you made a montage about you. Did you ever have a montage? I did, did yeah. Oh, did you? Been around a long time. Ah, oh, damn. Yeah. I was hoping to catch you, though. Got a, got a few, you know. Yeah. One, one day you'll grow up to be a big shoutcaster boy. He's pitching. If you're out there and want to get remember back. Your school, remember your school oh. uniform at the moment? It looks really cute. I really like it. This was a tie that Mac Football. gifted me. Oh, nice. I mean, 2-0 you... on the day. Yeah, exactly. Doing well. Let's turn our attention to the Buffaloes. And more specifically, I think maybe let's talk a little bit about these, dra these uh, dragons. These junglers. It has been a long day, uh, ladies and gentlemen, everybody else. Uh, BJ and Ferret, that Hecram into Trundle. They are starting both respectively in the top half. Yeah, they are. And, and while that... It's interesting, I would really love if we could get the runes back up. I don't know if it's actually possible because AP Sack in the top side when you played him was with Conqueror as well. You're kind of looking for the old Rift Maker or the Andrews to just keep it going. Get the extra AP you get, but also the healing that you have. So knowing what Froggy really has gone for to set himself up for success with this could be curious, but at least it pairs up to the with a Conqueror being locked in. And I, <laughs> I am... I am baffled, uh, and, yeah. and I, yeah. I, I, I am genuinely baffled. Now, from the side of the junglers, we can bring it up now. Ferret is going for the old reliable, where you take red buff and you move yourself down towards the bot side immediately. He's done this before as well, and he's looking to just find a gang before the enemy bot lane hits level two. Farfetch, oh. have you started Q? You have that he flash. WE neither has been uh, uh, ranked up just yet. Yep, pillar available to him. Yep, Ferret. Yep. Pillar, double knockup, headbutt is going to be flashed away from Shogun. On the tower, he's under the tower. Stunned on the tower, the tower shot comes out. And Taki Taki turns it around. Now Shogun continues to free fire. The cow's running for his life. Holy Phoenix cannot auto attack. Cannot. He kept in rain. The Zen is He's under the tower now. Headbutt forward. I love Vietnam. But it's the Wildcats <laughs> that bounce it back. A one for one. That was both beautiful and awful at the same time. You may not like it, but that is what Pete League of Legends looks like. And it comes from both Turkey and Vietnam, at least in the first stages of a play -in stay. And I mean, it was a good thing to get red buff on one member of Saigon Buffaloes, but even better to get it back on towards Healy, Holy Phoenix afterwards. And it looked good in the beginning. It looks like you almost get the classic Alistar combo where you pulverize him back into the enemy team, you pick up the kill, but just great presence of mind from Taggy to just immediately find that center plate. And the cooldown on Leona is so short, so he's still looking, but this is where you put yourself in prime position for Farfetch to just knock you away and then Holy Phoenix with that last auto attack pick it up but we're not done yet oh my word we're back to another fight PJ this time jumped on by Saren now this will get the blood pumping we just set the fastest win of the day as loud we're able to take down DFM so I got Buffalo and the Wildcats are trading blow for blows there's the possibility this could break that oh here we go no or... flash on Shogun so Farfetch could still look does have that heck fight but you know what this is what my jet like body needs just inject it into me oh I'm gonna find out how much action is gonna play out here all right it's gonna continue as Froggy is now being jumped on in the middle lane we'll throw out that stretching strike I'm gonna find the next target look at the, look at the support look at, look at Farfetch Hex flash, hex flash, hex flash! Froggy gets knocked up and his passive is popped. Froggy will be channeling Faker from All Stars 2018. Ask me why, Gulborg. Why? Because at All Star 2018, Faker played Zach mid. It's the only other game that we can find of Zach mid being played, so not a formal game. Do you want to know why he channeled Faker? Yeah. They lost that game oh my <laughs> to word. Rookie's Malzahar. So that was a super BM call. And my stats team enabled, thank you guys. Yeah, but actually taking it back to what we talked about to bring some seriousness into it, 
We did not expect Wildcats to be the team that was going to pull the trigger. We did say with the Trundle, we wanted you to be proactive. Yes. And so far, Ferret has actually been so. Not so much in terms of counter jungling like you usually would see on the Trundle, but actually in terms of facilitating the laners instead. And by enabling the bot lane, also enabled the roam that we saw from Farfetch, which he was then able to get some pressure in the mid lane too. And they continue. Look at the mobility here. I mean, this is fantastic from the Wildcats because we were anticipating a much slower pace of game. Fuck and we do Wildcats. look at how they do play out their wins from the TCL. Froggy's gonna land that stretch and strike, looking for secondary target. I love when two champions get pulled together. Attach one, attach two, now yes. kiss. And that will be followed up with all the CC. I mean, if that lands and Leona follows and Hecarim follows, that is how Saigon Buffer will want to accelerate this game. But it's the Wildcats. They've got two kills. They're only marginally behind in gold. And I think um, they also have a huge amount of engaged tools themselves. Yeah, but at this point in time, there's two ways you can look at it. You can look at Wildcats to completely elevate it as well and continue with the gold lead they have. But even then, they have a good scaling aspect of their side too. You don't have to be too worried about it. And Kaiser pairs really well into the Hecarim. She pairs really well into the sack. And of course, if you just, they're not immediately in your face. But the fact yeah. you can go invisible, kite with your ultimate, and have that passive to really shred these tanky stats, it, it, it's amazing. I mean, I want to just take a brief moment to remind everyone, Shogun, and Taki, I know you will have heard it and seen it, but when they played that opening game against T1 and MSI, the bottom lane is what took off. I mean, at one point, I think Shogun was, what, 7-0-1 or something? Um, T1 was significantly further ahead in kills, but this game again, it's Shogun and Taki with the extravagant, the flamboyant, the over-the-top early game. Even on CS, the kill was secured by Taki, was matched by Holy Phoenix, who's one of the danger players for Wildcats, and... With them pushing in that bottom wave, they've started Dragon, but SGB, I think they want to challenge us. BJ, I'm trying to look, he's not yet level six. Headbutt, Pulverize comes forward. That's the stun from the shield of Daybreak. They engage yet another knockup. Saren hits six off the kill. That's an instant reply. One for one, both supports are down, and they disengage from the Buffaloes. Yeah, Froggy coming around as well, seeing if he can find anything. And actually, despite his team members bay having backed off, they still look for it. Holy Phoenix, no flash. Bullet time, bullet time. One more Rufflecopter, helicopter, make it rain, and the auto to secure. Buffaloes pick up their second 1-0 to 100% kill participation on Shogun's Misfortune. Yeah, play looked good in the beginning with Farfetch finding that Hex Flash. Once again, like, they continue to be aggressive. Wildcats looking like they wanted to pick up that early objective like we saw Lao do earlier, but they really do it to bait in their opposition. They have the vision control. They try to push him back, knowing Taki doesn't have any Flash, but Ferret is still on the Drake, and that makes it a 3v3 in the beginning that allowed Saigon Buffalo to trade even. And now that Froggy is finally able to be enabled from the mid lane, they can move. What Holy Phoenix is doing here, he's just walking back and forth, and because he's indecisive, he just gets caught in the middle between a rock and a hard place. I also love the name synergy with the elastic shing slingshot. Shingshot. A froggy jumping far down the river. It's just thematically <laughs> on point. As we do get a Lasai face palm. Now, of course, the top lane is under pressure. Buffalo, once again, they are initiating. They didn't like the fact the Wildcats were throwing as many punches. Seven kills, eight minutes, and 1,600 gold lead to Saigon Buffalo. Yeah, and there you have it. This is the roam you want Taki to be able to do. We see him do this so many times. Even on Enchanters as well, he'll be the one. He'll making the place up towards the top side. Now, I... Fight. Wildcats coming Locked through. Locked in. Locked in. BNJ's caught out between the pillar and a hard place. Onslaught of Shadows need to go defensively. Froggy is going to be able to escape with that slingshot. And Kubuk, you are not going to be able to analyze a lot because in the time it takes to set up and explain a point, they're already engaging again. It doesn't help either that I see IW and I just think I will dominate. So I'm really <laughs> finding a hard time here. But now Wildcats haven't started up that Rift Herald, looking to see if they can potentially turn as well on Taki again. He gets caught. Senate Blade doesn't pull him out. Starscream forces the flash from Shogun. BNJ engages. He's got no ultimate. The Rift Herald is still being focused. What are you doing? There's nothing going down yet. Rift Hill does get killed off. Is now Ferret's running away for his life. Snip, snip, snip. No one's been able to pick it up. As well. Nobody's picked up the eye just yet. Zenith played as well as the solar flare goes down. It was Taki that was caught to begin this. And now all of a sudden he's trying to rejoin the fight, but the rest of the Wildcats are destroying Saigon Buffalo. What is this team fight? Everybody involved, but the Wildcats win it all. And this is how Wildcats do it usually. They so find it in that team fight. fights. I mean, it's all over the place. An early <laughs> game where no one's getting blown up in the beginning. It is just long team fight you're in for. Now, Rift Herald is in pocket. I wonder if you're looking for it immediately now. You don't have to explain, extend the play just yet. You still have loads of time to take a chill and just 
collect yourself and find the correct play with it. And that's exactly what Wildcats is going to do, so I do recommend them of this. Oh, my word. 13 kills, nine and a half minutes. It is all of a sudden the Wildcats that are up, what, 15, 1800 gold? So that was nearly a 3k gold swing. I, I, how do you explain this fight, Kobe? I mean, this could have been really good if Taki actually managed to find the center plate afterwards on Farfetch, yeah. because then you get out of the situation and you still keep your reliable CC around. A lot of the pressure goes down to Froggy now. BJ has just been put out of the fight. He's actually trying to secure the scuttle. And it's just a lot of unfortunate skill shots missing here. If the sack queue is there to set up the kill, maybe you'll find something. But it's just way more reliable CC from Wildcats here, and it makes the fight so much easier. And I mean, the target focus as well. Wildcats, as soon as they start having members going low, they back out. The Buffalo are unable to find those last hits, unable to secure the kills. For a brief moment, it looked like everyone was going to die everywhere, but ultimately, the Wildcats come out with a significant win. They were down 1,800. They were up a fair amount before now the waves have been caught. We need to take stock of the lanes really quick. Um, in the top no, lane, Star only down time. 30. Solar Flare, as well as the Onslaught of Shadows. The headbutt under the tower. Devastating charge to safety. <laughs> not going to be enough. And the Wildcats pick up yet another. The burn, burn, burn will not take Holy Phoenix down. And it's the Wildcats that pick up yet another kill in, like, Mobility shenanigans everywhere. Man, Farfetch is getting again. freebies all the time. Froggy's around though this time around, and he will pick up the kill on Ferret. Shokun takes back that red buff. Today I learned frogs can kill ferrets, and buffaloes are looking to kill wildcats. Teleport. Teleport under the tower. Pick up the turret plate and slingshot away to safety. That will bring Starscreen into the fray. That's an interesting TP because you do this to get waves and make sure they can take plates, but then on the top side, now you're actually just giving Hasmet time to pick up plates. So they get Saren, who is pushing the mid lane. He's now going to move up towards the top side, but you still lost a plate for it. One for one in terms of kill, but in terms of gold, you're securing on the map. Like in Buffalo, looking good, and Hasmet just meeting up with Saren. Saren and Hasmet currently trading blows. Needle work, traded back and forth, but there's a hijacked in return. Saren's also fighting into the minion wave. No support yet. BJ moving up towards that top lane. Once again, Buffalo's the arrest control of the gold. Wildcats for a moment, and I think in terms of CS, bot lane and top lane, Hazmed and Shogun doing very, very well. Up 30 in the bottom lane, and even more in the top lane. I'm not gonna try to do math, it's too late. Because Binjay's on the hunt. Binjay looking for kill. Most likely won't find it with the, well, opponent Shongla being spotted on the top side. This should just be a Drake being secured up for Wildcat. It's not gonna be a stack but it's them picking up their first dragon. It felt like they've already gotten one, but there's been so much fighting around these neutrals. Okay, so I think what, what'll determine this game, who's better at team fighting? Let's just look at compositions. Do you uh, prefer not, one to the other? You hold up, you're oh not gonna get the word, chance. Oh my word, we literally get a chance. Look for flank here as he's coming in. We're gonna step forward. We're gonna use that devastating charge directly into the ways of Froggy, who gets caught up by the pulverized stretching strike, comes out and Shogun stepping forward. Bullet time's available to him, firing across. Farfetch survives, thinks Unbreakable. Will on his ultimate, and now all of a sudden, Farfetch, Holy Phoenix Correction, lands that W. I'm waiting for the engagement. I'm literally waiting for Target it. to get jumped on. And just and hold it. Like they're going to back away for now. And there you have it. So oh. play is over, but it's one of these small flanks. Starscream was around to look for a potential play, because Holy Phoenix does still have that ultimate if they're looking for anything, but they're going to keep it steady just for now. But this time around, no one's getting knocked in on the tower. b &J finds the pick onto Ferret, and a great solo flare as well, just to set him up with Froggy coming in afterwards. And I kept waiting to see whether or not Holy Phoenix would look for that Killer Instinct engage, or whether or not Farfetch would get jumped on, because that's what's happened every single time. Number one dragon goes to the Wildcats, and Ferret steps forward, has made got Ghost available to him. The revised can be a potential threat. Stern continues to hammer away. Hallowed Mist is down. Snip, 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 as well as Needlework has already been fired out, and Saren survives for now, looking for Kingslayer, looking for the slash, the dash, the chains, find the kill. Tenth on the board for the Wildcats. Saren 3-0-4 inside us. Yeah, and incredibly greedy by Hasmet. They barely have any vision or intel about any of the opponents from Wildcats, so going for the engage there, um, he kind of begs for it, and the rest of his team is just too busy clearing up the camps. There is still a jungle advantage for BJ. You can see he's level 9 to Ferret's 8. They might need each other here as well, but oh. Senate Blade does not connect this time around. I mean, that Frozen Domain movement speed is really going to help Ferret out. He was stepping for at the last moment, decided to go back to the top lane and avoided the Zenith Blade. BJ and Taki still on the hunt because Froggy's in the top lane. Wave is being caught mid from Shogun. He's got his Kraken Slayer. 
to match Holy Phoenix's Kraken Slayer as well as Phantom Dancer. Yeah, and it's really important you highlight these mythics on extra items coming in now, of course, because 20 seconds and Rift Hell will be the play. When you look at the minimap right now, all the wards are lit up in favor of Saigon Buffalo, but if you look at the minimap again and actually just keep your focus pin there, you'll see that they've been on resets from Saigon Buffalo. This allows Wildcats to get in there and clear up the vision if they're decisive enough to do it in time, but they're actually going to leave it be, move into the mid lane, and potentially try and see if they can take care of this turret. Look at Starscream, look at Starscream. Got that prison available to him. Saren is stolen away. The onslaught of shadows that finds the chain onto Taki. Solar Flare locks him up. He can't even fire the hijacked ult. It does allow the tower to be secured. But once again, it is the Wildcats engaging. It's the Wildcats that are ramping up their play to throw down with Buffalo. And they might still do it. You can see it. No fishing on the bot side. Here comes the Glacial Prison. Won't find a direct hit. Taki slowed, but not stunned in place. And all of a sudden, Wildcats unable to find more. Buffalo this time standing in the darkness, hoping the Wildcats step into them. Yeah, and you can even just see it on the bot side as well. If they're not taking this fight, Hasmet has taken away turret plating. He kicks off the turret. Now he comes in with the TP <laughs> flank. <laughs> teleport, teleport, teleport. Has made a step forward using that snip, snip, snip onto Star Screen. He's got no ultimate available to him. Far fetched. Just got a leak in the boat and taken down by Hasmet. And all of a sudden, it's Buffalo's inside the pit. Yeah, so Ferry does still have that flash, but no smite. So even trying to contest this Rift Hell is probably not going to be the play. And the timing in that is actually really good for Saigon Buffalo because they can pick up this neutral objective and they will have the time to move back with a reset, have it utilized for the Drake. They'll actually be spawned in one minute as well. So good stuff from Saigon Buffalo and a good way for them to continue with the gold lead that they currently have. I am so surprised and happy to see what the Wildcats are doing, not only from the prep that we had because coming sending in, in. I hate you right now. I love each other. Because they are fully committing, engaging, playing proactively, or as you children will say, sending it. Exactly. And I think even looking for plays here, you can do it because you know the top laner is playing down towards the bot side, but this is the vision control we were talking about earlier as well. Wildcats never cleared this. They went for the mid lane to look for a fight, and because you did that, you gave agency for Saigon Buffalo to actually find these flanks, to find the intel that they needed for it, and they punish on it immediately. So the overextension from Wildcats continue, even yeah. stemming back to the first play they had. Now, can the Wildcats stabilize this, or are they comfortable enough with this approach to their gameplay to be able to keep this pressure up and more importantly actually take the lead because despite the kill advantage the dragon advantage buffalo have had the gold lead for a larger portion of this game we're 17 and a half minutes in herald has dropped top and i just want to set a goal for everyone watching at home the highest amount of total kills throughout the course of playing day one was set by mad lions and Istris gaming at 34. mad lions picked up 22 kills Istris dropped so 34 was the most kills in the game. We're already at 90. We will beat it. We I... will beat it. That is the goal of this game as well. Now, Rift Hell as well, top side has been expanded. They're looking to see if they can get a second turret, but members are not really in a position to capitalize on it. And good job by Starscreen as well by shutting it down. Continue. While we have a brief moment, let's talk a little bit about the Zack mid. Um, it may be not be the most scientific of games to evaluate the validity or the power of Zack mid, but how do you think it's gone for Froggy? <laughs> Well, first of all, I don't think it's been bad. And having mid laners that play a facilitating style, a champion like Sad is not bad either. If you're under afraid of being Diver, do, di, what's the do, Dove? Dove. Yeah, Div Divin's a better one. I like Divin though. Dove, Dove, Div Div Divadon from uh, Div maybe that's not your show <laughs> no. actually. That's that's too early. Sorry, Nickelodeon. Um, either way. Either way, being dived a lot and working well. And working well with the passive that you have. And also just like having the CC to facilitate members in a team fight is exactly what Froggy wants. And now we actually have the time to talk about it. This game feels like it's going to come down to whoever's going to play the team fights better. And it's been a um, mixed bag of good execution, interesting outplays. Do you prefer one team composition to the other? Because I think the Wildcats one is just more traditional, right? And I think if Saigon and Buffalo can make their comp work, maybe, but I'm trying to wrap Listen, my head around it. How I use my analysis is by watching a lot of pro games, and I use that data as I see what happens in my analysis, then find out like what I really like when they then play against each other, because I've seen it so many times. This is new territory. And it is new territory. Yeah. This is learning experience for me. And I think both right. of the teams have had to theorize, have ways where they play these team fight well. I think it comes down to execution, how you use them. But if there's one player I would say make the difference, it's Holy Phoenix on a Kaiser that can actually kite out a lot of the CC that comes through from Saigon Buffalo. Killer Instinct is going to be so crucial then. 
Holy Phoenix has that available, has flash available, has cleanse up as well. Shogun, no flash, by the way. But if you look at the minimap, Wildcat's currently playing the side lanes. Starscreen in the bottom lane, Saren in the top lane. And this is the longest passage of play in 20 minutes. Nobody has yet gone down. Two dragons to Wildcats. The thousand gold difference really is insignificant at this stage of the game. And there's two important items completed for both bot laners. It's only Froggy that's a little bit behind the itemization. Teleport's now being channeled here at Gulborg. And it looks like Wildcats slowly starting to group up. But ultimately, they will defend the tower. They will concede the teleport to do so. And neither team really able to now force their opponent's hands. There's not enough tower secured to push deeper into the territory for deep wards either. I, you say that, there's actually quite a few towers to secure as well in terms of finding them here because I, outer turrets have still not all fallen. Tier 2 turrets, despite being 20 minutes into the game, have not really been equalized upon either. Usually we see that happen in a larger amount of play with the second rift held, but it was shut down as well. And it puts them in this lull state where it's just like they want to commit to a fight. They want to find a way where they get an advantage, not only just in terms of team fighting, but in in terms of map stating but the only way they do it with their team composition is trying to look for a fight but they're trying to find the right ground for it it's like they're building their battleground they're placing around the vision they're looking for the right time and they're looking well uh, for the right i actually don't have the word for right it, moment to engage exactly. i mean the right moment to fight the thing i want to look for is whether or not buffalo can use husmet's gwen on the side lane in any way shape or form i, I like that Saren and starscreen were trying to set up some form of, sort of i don't know slow push or or not, the answer from Buffalo was just to group up. And if you can see there immediately, Hasmet at least caught that top wave and pushed it back out. But it feels to me like both teams have now kind of said, okay, let's calm down. Let's think about how we play out this mid to late game. We're a minute and 10 seconds away. So for Buffalo, you have to expect they would want to contest this dragon. For the Wildcats, ideally, if they could pick, you know, get a pick, get a kill beforehand, secure it without a fight. Yeah, most definitely. Um, but also, Wildcat, they have that luxury that they still love scaling. Like, if, the, if this game goes slow, they don't care. And the same goes for Saiga and Buffalo. But in terms of what they're picking up, in terms of the Drake, you can clearly see that they're trying to just keep that stacking going. Mountain Drakes are incredibly broken in this kind of state we have here. Picking up two Mountain Drakes alone with your extra resistance by percentage you get in the late game can make your AD carry go to just 100 armor well, and be like a tank it, off tank in its own right. Yeah, but add that to a Sejuani and base kit stats. Add that to a Trundle that's going to be able to subjugate away what? as well as Alistair. So Mountain Drake with the composition the Wildcats have. Now, to be fair, I can say the same thing with Hecarim, Zack, and Fiona, right? So it's going to be good for both sides. The difference being here, Wildcats are two dragons ahead of the pace, and there's not enough vision inside that red quadrant. There's one just behind the dragon pit that the Wildcats have placed down. And I'm looking at the mini-map. Starscream will be making his way there, holding onto the TP. Farfetch looking for a flank. Oh, he might be he... the one being flanked in a bit, though, if he's not careful. He's going to get caught up here by BJ. Buffalo are fully aware of it. Will he go the way of the Dodo? Onslaught of Shadows committed. Solar Flare committed. Farfetch has thrown down the Unbreakable Will and still alive, still alive. Flashes still alive, but not much longer. The bullet time will take him down and Starscreen will follow. Buffalo managed to catch the Wildcat, who did not sacrifice their support and they will suffer the consequences. Three dead already. Elastic Slingshot and the Stretching Strike will not find its target. Three quick kills. The Buffalo will look to secure both the Dragon and potentially the Baron. That is just going to be the Baron. Ferret does not have that flash, and he does not have the smile. He does have the smile at the moment, but finding agency into the pick is going to just be so damn difficult. Gwen shreds Baron, Shogun's around as well. This should just go over to Saigon Buffalo. I really want to see on that, that replay, in my head, the Wildcats should have just left Farfetch to die instead of stepping forward. Yeah. That's my head. No, but that's true. That's I, not just your head. I mean, your head is saying the right thing. And now, find themselves in a great position. And it makes sense to look for a flank. But the problem is, even if you find it right now, your team is not in a position to capitalize. Like, look at the vision control that currently is in River. Farfetch doesn't have River control. It's all Saigon Buffalo. And even in flashing over, just meeting the misfortune ultimate, finding yourself in a five versus four, and yes, some ultimates are down, doesn't stop the CC from still coming through. You're playing into a Leona, yeah. you're playing into a Sag, and you're playing into a Gwen that's still gonna keep the consistent damage going, despite not having the ultimate available any longer. I mean, I'm wondering, you know, yeah. I don't think it was the right call. I think it was a mistake. <laughs> yeah, I think you're that, right about that. That explains it. I mean, that fully explains it from the Wildcats. And that's the turning point as well, because despite Saigon Buffalo still, you know, being quite even with them in a gold lead, the game state was in a position where yeah. Wildcats were still feeling comfortable.
but now that gets completely ripped away from them. And now it's on the other side of Psyche and Buffalo, even if it goes late game, if they're the ones start, uh, who start striking these Mountain Drakes, if they get four of them, they get 36% extra armor and magic resistance. Now I will say that when we look at that play, and I think when we evaluate sort of the 20, you know, the zero to 20 minute mark for the Wildcats, uh, not a team that we've associated with this style of play that we've seen this game, not one that like that regularly, yeah. but they do win a number of their games from the TCL through team fights, right? Through late game fights, late game calls, their comp goes late often, or their team goes late often. They're now in a very difficult position. The Red Bull Baron power play is already at 1600. They're down 5k gold. They're losing an inhibitor turret. They're not in their base to defend. Look jungler. at the minimap. There's no one here to defend. Buffalo will not be able to pick up the kill just yet, but the bull time does so much damage. One for one traded, and Husband can continue to step forward. Looking for the snip, snip, snip. Froggy will flash away from the chains, gets popped into his passive, and Shogun can come to save. Starscreen escapes with his life. It's a one for two. The brace is broken open. The inhibitor will fall as well, and like, the Wildcats were just not there. Yeah, and since the recalls are coming through, you might even look for any turrets. Pinks are there, but they're not going to go overextend their stay. They get the mid lane inhibitor, they get what they wanted, and they can still go for the recalls with the Baron Empowered Recall. 25 kills in 25 minutes. The record today was 34. And I want to take another look at that mini-map uh, if we do get a replay, because I'm not sure if they were chasing Hasmid or similar. I, I didn't quite see why uh, Wildcast didn't respond because that was a three tower mid lane push. I think they just over. They, I mean, it's just a read, right? And yeah. like they had the read that they thought they could go for it. In reality, they just couldn't, and that just becomes the play afterwards that happens. Now, coming out from this, having mid lane inhibitor, it's not the worst. It's easy for Saigon Buffalo to push it in and then move down to a lane. But let's say if it was bot side, then that just would have meant that Saigon Buffalo could play on mid lane and top side, and bot lane would be an instant pressure all the time. That would be harder to move on because we. Slower to get up there now, Seren and Starscream gets around. Holy Phoenix, he's got that killer instinct, can look to engage with it in just a moment. With some plasma is applied, stun will lock down Froggy, remember he's got no passive from the previous fight. Look at the mini-map though, look at the mini-map. Four members of Buffalo pushing the bottom and the uh, middle lane. Hazman's gonna guide the super minions forward. And the sixth and final creation, sixth tower will fall. There's one final outer turret in that top lane. And look, it was a very dramatic start to the game, but this is what we were anticipating from how these two teams would match up. I think Buffalo, with the uh, advantages they get from team fights, are playing the map, picking up more neutrals as we've moved into the mid to late game. I mean, I expected it from Psyche and Buffalo, but I genuinely did not expect Wildcats to come in with the approach that they did to the game. Usually from them, we see them started in the mid game where they want to skill check their opponents and out team fight them. But they wanted to do that from the get go. Yeah. I think props to them for really just coming in with the blood loss for it. But maybe too much blood loss with, of course, Farfetch is getting caught off guard and the rest of the members taking that team fight. Yeah. 30 seconds on the second mountain, Drake, to put you on the clock there in terms of the resistance you're giving over. If Saigon Buffalo get it, they are now getting 18% extra magic resist and armor. And that is a lot at this point in the game when you see players building the Dead Man's Plate, already a fawn male. I don't really think it's the best buy on Froggy, uh, but it's still going to give you a lot in terms of the extra armor you have. I mean, look, I'll, I'll tell you now that uh, including, so uh, base armor here for BNJ is at 98, plus the bonuses he's getting, it's up to 162. Magic resist, 62 when combined. 201 armor, 100 MR on the side of Froggy. Let me just look at Shogun. 141, 51. 84 base armor plus 58 bonus on a miss for I just want to demonstrate how broken this is. Can we please highlight Shogun so we can see his armor in a bit? Because he's now bought the Guardian Angel. And having that Guardian Angel and looking at it, we might actually not be able to see it because of the inhibitors. Yeah. Trevor, would I you mean, do me the favor? I just gave you numbers, my friend, as you were looking at the screen. 141. And with the bonuses now jump 153, 84 base, plus the nice 69 bonus. So there you have it. Yeah, I mean, phenomenal. Damage. Just from the armor on an AD carried out. They're, they're going to be hard to shred. Luckily yeah. still, you have the Kaiser, and that's really what you're looking for in that instance. You still have Seren, who's going to be a threat on the Silas, sitting on the free items. But if you allow your opponent to stack up on mountains in the late game, it's just super valuable in terms of just getting percentage extra armor magic resistance. And it's going to continue to stack, right? 918, 27, 36 bonus for every dragon. Saigon Buffalo could be super beefy there now. We'll look at the top lane tower once again. Wildcats late to this play, not in time to respond. and. You have to feel like either they're 
being bullied or they're just not reading what Buffalo are doing. Alright, it's difficult with the goalie, but you can see they are still looking. Yeah. Starscreen was trying to come in with a flank there, but this time around, Psycho and Buffalo, they're clever. They're playing on two lanes. If they play on three lanes, it's easy to catch a member off, like we saw with Froggy earlier. So they just want to keep the pressure up in that regard instead, but... I think this might be one of the last waves with the super minions coming through. We'll probably have one or two more. And with this, Baron Buff has been started up. Farfetch does have flash. You just have that smite available. Let's see how this pans out. And if Buffalo engages this fight, surely they don't just burger flip this. Surely they don't just stick it. Four and a half K start to back out. BJ's gone low. That will pull the Wildcats towards them, but in a full 5v5, stay down the barrel, neither team pulls the trigger. Yeah, and it's, we're still going to go back to this slow approach. We're not really looking for anyone to just, well, send it immediately on the tower. Although there is a lot of tools for it, I think they just really respect the fact that they don't want to throw this game. It's the best of one. It's Saigon's Pavlo's first game of the tournament. And there's a lot of expectations for this team as well. Also from what we saw from MSI, what we have seen from BCS in the past. And seeing that Wildcats are actually stepping up to it and answering the call as well in terms of the same stylistic with the team fighting, it's it, it must be some pressure that you're facing. <laughs> and reminder, um, Dash and the analyst said this a little bit earlier. We're talking about the youngest team here at Wells, an average age of 19 years old. And this is a group of players that um, definitely have something to prove, definitely want to compete and had a, a much closer season than they did in spring with the Gigabyte Marines, a team that everyone's going to be very familiar with. The, the first few kills of this game, Gulborg, you screamed at the top of your lungs, I love Vietnam. And right now, Buffalo looking to pick up this win. Can they initiate the fights? Yeah, that's going to be the big question here because Taki has actually fun. Farfetch again, he's popped up the ultimate and team fight breaks out. Shogun's going to be able to flash away, gets out to safety. Solar Flare's going to slow down the wild gets engaged and Farfetch is once again caught up. This time, BJ's running interference. The cow goes down. Needles are fired out from Hazmir. Hop over the wall. Starscreen caught up inside the Baron pit. Sam's going to look for the chains, holding onto it. Got that flash available to him. Make it rain, continues to drop. Bullet time is available as well. Buffalo have got themselves two kills already. Saren has hijacked the bullet time. Starts firing it across, but Froggy will not go down. Bean J continues to stick onto Baron. He's down below 500 hit points. Two and a half thousand in the pit. One thousand in the pit. Baron secured by the Buffalo. We will be able to get out, but that was close. 5v3, they get it. Yeah, and once again, it's Farfetch. Even despite having Alistar and an ultimate coming with it, he gets isolated here. He gets picked apart. It turns into a 4 versus 5, and it's going to be easy for Saigon Buffalo's afterward. And now with this Baron buff, surely this is where they start equalizing their pressure even further. They can move into the mid lane. They can start picking up that inhibitor. There's a Drake spawning in 1 minute and 30 seconds. But seeing how it pans out again, Farfetch, he gets aggressive, and then that flash from Shogun actually makes it so the poor Rice puts him in a position where he's no longer pushing Shogun into the enemy team. He's pushing him back into Saigon with him, and that allows them to pick him apart. I mean, I think that flash from Shogun was so, so crucial. Had he got caught out, that fight could have gone very differently, but I want to give some kudos there to BJ on the back, running interference, and yeah, Wildcats just, again, continue to stick around. I think bullet time could have gone very differently, but ultimately didn't. 28 kills, 32 minutes, we're a minute away from the next mountain Drake. The gold lead is nearly 9,000 gold at the moment, approaching that 10K. And the team fights just become significantly harder for the Wildcats to play at. They really need to, frankly, find someone out of position like Farfetch has been found the previous time. Yeah, exactly. And it's just difficult for them to find that momentum because it's them getting engaged on so many times and not them finding the right engages where they can really set up the team fight how they like it. Now, stacked wave Red in the bottom sign and allows the rest of Saigon Buffalo to push into that bot lane. They don't even need the minions. They can just flank Wildcats right now if they want to. What is the call here? Wildcats not really making a decision, getting caught down in no man's land. The inhibitors dropped and... Baron empowered cannon minions are now hammering away on the Nexus turrets. Solar Flare's been hijacked from Saren. That's AP scaling. Doesn't do too much to Taki's Leon and the Mountain Drake's at work. The next one's spawning in five seconds. The return Solar Flare from Taki's great. The bullet time won't be able to find a kill. And Ferret's running for his life. The engage comes out now. From that uh, froggy elastic slingshot, Onslaught Shadows goes forward. BJ forced to go golden and stays alive as the Baron part of Minton now taking down the middle inhibitor. One kill and reply, it's BJ down. Seren's trying to pop at least the Seven GA for Shogun. And all of a sudden, the rest of Wildcats back out. It's a one for one. 
And as it stands, now Buffalo looking to finish this off. They want to pick up the win. Can they close it out? Stretching strike, manages to pull Starscream towards a million. Holy Phoenix with a double up, gets chunked down low. Nexus turret number one falls, and it's Shogun that picks up yet another kill. Auto after Auto is destroying the Wildcats. Shogun is melting through Istanbul. And Saigon Buffalo take down the Nexus for the win. It was not clean, it was eventful, it was a lot of kills, it was a lot of action, it was a lot of indecisiveness, it was a lot of decisiveness. And in the end, Saigon Buffalo, they find the first victory of their world playing front. And here's a quick stat for everyone watching. As far as we can tell, this is the first professional win for a Zach Mid. That was a hard game to cast. We're approaching 11 hours in the studio for you, Gorborg. Came in a bit for myself, and the chaos in the early game kind of put everybody off balance. I, I have to wonder, you know, Wildcats tried to match blow for blow. Definitely did.